What would a new headset be without a bunch of potential accessories? Now we just got the PSVR 2 and already the first thing on my mind after I fully charged the controllers and played for about four hours and they were telling me low battery, they actually held out another hour with the low battery warning and didn't quite die. But I was thinking about, I need a spot to keep these charged. And that made me think, what are some other accessories that we can talk about? Let's do it. So to solve problem one, I've got a couple different charging docks here I got. I got one from Nexigo because I know the name and some of their stuff has been pretty good. Although this one is already unavailable on Amazon and it says Dobe on it. So it's obviously some dropship thing anyways, but that was 30 bucks. And then I got a $40 one that not only holds the headset, charges the controllers, gives you a spot to charge your DualSense and hold the PS5. So let's check these out. Small sharp unboxing knife is always a necessity. Let's see if there's any tape on this while we're at it. Kill two boxes with one sword, boom. So the $30 one is just obviously for all your PSVR stuff. It's not gonna hold your PS5 or your dual sensor or any of that. So it's something simple that you just wanna have nearby that charges it all. And this advertises fast charging, because I will say charging up the controllers did take a while. It comes with two magnetic charger tips. They don't give you any extras, so don't mess around. And so if you were finishing playing, you'd come up to this. Oh, that actually swoops in pretty nicely, I've gotta say. I like that. Let's assemble the back portion and see how it actually holds the headset. We got a little, uh, little steel there. <laughs> We've got a USB-C to USB-A to run the whole thing. No power brick because of course not. And then the plastic stand for the headset to go on. So it looks like this pretty simply goes in here. I'm assuming it goes this way. You know what assuming does though. You know what they say about assuming. It makes an ass out of you and Ming. Uh oh, bad assumption. People say this is where instructions might come in handy, but it's not a permanent one. It's pretty easy to just switch it back and forth. I don't mind the look of it. I figure if you're gonna have this next to your PS5 or something, you'd probably just wind up your cable each time and set it aside. And now there is a charging dock specifically from Sony. I didn't pick that one at all to check out because it only does your controllers. So like, where are you gonna put your headset? I was just like, eh. So we got blue lights. I feel like it should give me some sort of indicator light here. It says it goes blue when they're fully charged, so I wonder if I had these already too charged up. I am surprised it wouldn't at least go slightly to orange and then like switch back to blue. Further testing will be required. I'll sit here and press the power button over and over till I drain the battery. Let's get this other one out on the desk and see what this looks like side by side. So this one is $40 with a 5% off coupon right now. <gasps> and they tell you immediately, dissatisfied or satisfied? Much bigger footprint this one's gonna take up. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Interesting. So for power, obviously with this one, you could plug it in your PS5 and draw power from there, or you can use a power brick. This one, the intention here is to plug both of these to get enough power out of your PS5 in the two USB ports you have in the back, the only two you have in the back, which does mean if you're thinking about like a PlayStation camera or something, no, not gonna happen. Basically at that point, you have your PSVR plugged in your USB-C, you would still have one USB port left. In theory, you would no longer need the front one to like charge a controller or something because you're gonna be charging all those on this. So I guess they assume if you wanna have your PS camera going, you're gonna plug it in the front, but it's kind of unsightly. It's not something I would prefer to do. This one comes with five little magnetic charging things. Oh man, they're really in there too. That means you get an extra one. So you got a dual sense, a dual sense, and both of your sense controllers. I'm gonna make assumptions again instead of looking at the instructions because I never learn lessons. I don't love that they put their brand name right on the front of it because it's like some unknown Hastraith brand name. It's like, why? Got two extra USB ports to charge stuff too. I don't know if this acts as a USB hub. I'll try and look at the instructions and see. Like, I doubt you could plug a PS camera into one of those. So this has fans in it. I haven't attached this yet, so I can still show you. This has fans inside of it here that are acting to cool down your PS5. So if you want to run those, it will help draw air out of it. Probably isn't a bad idea if you're running your PS5 hot, but it's kind of a gimmick. A lot of these stands also have to help sell them. Wait, at least you don't have to worry about ever losing these things. Small sharp knife comes in handy more than you know. In the top there. And we have an indicator light telling us that is charging. So this one's a little awkward. So like I was saying earlier, you finish playing on this one, you walk up to it, you dump it right in, easy. This one is situated in a weird way where it looks like you'd drop it in like... Dang me for keeping my controllers charged and ready to go. What was I thinking? I'll be right back. 
Well, I wasn't trying to be that guy and uh, reveal that there's two of these, but now that I have, I gotta say a thank you to Sony for sending us the second one that came in later after we'd made the video with the first one. We got two stands, so I was like, okay, maybe this is just what we're gonna have to do to figure this out. So we got the other Sense controller in there too. It's nice that they can do two of them. Now I'm pretty sure at least one of these isn't charged up, so we should be able to learn a bit more here. So again, kind of a weird way you're putting them on here, but you're gonna drop it in that way. Why do you hate me? Starting to question the two-way communication on all this. F, you're effing up my video here. We have to see how this PSVR goes on. Now, I don't love the way it fits onto this stand. It's just like lenses hanging off. It does have this little cable hook here. It's kind of like a vacuum, but you can't, like, it's not like a vacuum where you would roll it around. It's just gonna kind of hang there. So I just gotta manually kind of eyeball something that's close to that. So that, in theory, should be able to hang down. And then your PSVR, it shows in the picture kind of just hanging like that. I'm not, I'm not in love with that part of it. I'm not gonna lie to you there. That's, that's a little sketchy to me. And then it comes with two of these, but it doesn't tell you the instructions why. It stands all right. I mean, for 30 bucks, it holds it all. I don't, I don't love that. I also need to screw this into the stand to keep it tight. Aha, we finally drained one enough. So that's showing you that one's red on there. Let's see what it looks like if I put it on this stand since we have not been able to find one that I didn't fully charge. Okay, well at least this stand seems to immediately recognize that that one could use some juice. We'll come back to stands. One thing that I really like about the new PSVR 2 is how easy it is to swap it around. You literally don't have any power cables or anything for this. It is just the headset and the cord. You can take it to a friend's PS5, plug it in there and you're gaming on that. But that means I'm not gonna wanna leave this thing in the car with the big lenses to let the sun in. So I'm wondering about cases. And this is actually an old PSVR 1 case that I got for like 10 bucks on clearance. And I'm hoping because of that, maybe, just maybe, I can find a way to fit this thing in here. The headset looks good, but the big problem is the new controllers are so big. Even getting one controller in there is a challenge. And I don't think there's a nice, easy way to seat these together that's gonna, well, you can seat them kind of. It was only 10 bucks, okay? <laughs> also, I would obviously recommend maybe put a lens cover in there, but look at that. You cannot beat a cheap $10 PlayStation VR branded licensed case to fit that in there. All you gotta do is punch it a little bit, modify the inside. I was also curious, since I have so many laying around, what would a big Quest case be like with the PSVR? I got our trusty Bobo VR case here. Bobo VR case is meant to be able to hold a halo strap, so it is a bigger case than usual. We're gonna have to come up with a nickname for how I'm nestling these controllers together. Spooning. Spooning, there we go. That is a spooned one. Now there are some PSVR 2 specific cases, but you could have one laying around and it fits. It's putting a little pressure on there. I wouldn't uh, wanna put any weight on top of that, but we've got case options. You might even have some case options laying around. PlayStation VR 2 does include some earbuds, but I'm not a big earbud fan when it comes to passing around sharing with people. So let's talk about some headphone options. Ideally, the ones they're recommending are the Sony Pulse 3Ds because they have the same Tempest 3D audio technology as the headset does, and you can actually use them wirelessly, which is a nice feature, but they're a hundred bucks. So I was like, what's something a little more budget friendly? I still have my Plantronics rigs for VRs from my original PSVR, and these are actually what I've been using so far. For a couple of reasons, they have decent audio. The mic is horrible. I don't want to talk about the mic, but PSVR 2 has its own mic, so you don't really have to worry about that. But the nice thing is since they were made for PSVR, they have a very short little cable that as long as you can find the hole, which weirdly they put the hole further back than on the original PSVR. So it's been a lot harder to plug headphones than I've found. You get that in there and it's only got a little extra cable. It's not gonna get in your way so much. And these are really comfortable. They're open ears. So they're actually supposed to help people not get motion sick because they're not closing them from off from the world. They can still hear the ambient noise in them. And they look pretty decent. The color's not perfect. They went for a bit more of a snow white on the PSVR 2, where these, also these are old, so I think they're yellowing a bit from their age. But these things right now, you can get these for 30 bucks or less on Amazon. So if you want some decent headphones, they're not gonna have a big long cable hanging your way. 
really cool. But really, if you're gonna get any sort of headphones for it, the most important thing if they are gonna be wired is find a set that you can switch in your own wire. Cause then you can order one on Amazon, like five bucks, get like a short little three inch one. And then you're not gonna have all that extra cable hanging. Cause you already got this cable to deal with. Why well, have that too? We're back to the grips. We went over and checked a whole bunch of games, spent a bunch of time draining these things down. Oh, that's the first time we've seen one show up and actually start doing it. Hmm, finicky. I would call this stand finicky. So far, I gotta say, as far as some third-party accessories are going, I'm not really feeling either of these. This one, it took so much to try and get this to ever start lighting up. And this one has been around the same amount of time. It's also down and it just doesn't seem to be registering that. So maybe the reason it's already unavailable on Amazon, maybe there was an issue they found. I don't know, but personally, I'm gonna say Nexigo stand is gonna get returned. I'm not gonna be keeping that. Found another reason not to use the Nexigo stand. That came right out when I tried to remove it from the back of there. So yeah, don't get that one. This one, I don't think I'm gonna leave a link for you to buy it either. It's it's not bad. I don't like how rickety this is. I really don't like how it holds the PSVR because I don't like anything that leaves it in a down angle like this to just dump dust down into your lenses. It does its job at least, it's doing everything. But as far as these two stands go, I think I'm gonna keep on looking. So if there's ones you've seen that you recommend, let me know in the comments down below. I'll, I'll get some more accessories for the PSVR. So I wanna have a good, nice setup for both of them where everything's ready to go all the time. I feel confident it's not burning up my electronics and ruining anything. But as far as it goes, what I find, I'll leave links in the description to ones that work like that PSVR case. If I can find another cheap one like that, I'll leave that for you because at least that worked and maybe some of the headphones and other things too that we're liking so far. But this was our first round of testing PSVR accessories. If you wanna see more of that, let me know in the comments and let me know what else you'd like to see. I'd love to know. But thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in another reality.